Okay, everyone, welcome to EdTech Currents at Central Michigan University. This is a great opportunity for us to share some of the insights that we have at the university and also learn about the educational technology program. And today we have a very special guest. We have Mr. Bond, Mr. Jeremy Bond, who is a two-time Central Michigan University graduate a uh, career educator and an instructional and information technology professor. He is a professional, rather. He is the, a, the current interim director of e-learning at CMU. And he goes all the way back to 1997 with his profession here. And this year he will complete his doctorate in educational technology. When he isn't in the classroom, virtually or physically, he is providing support and guidance for someone who is. Uh, with a current adjunct faculty appointment at CMU and former career at Mid-Michigan Community College, Jeremy te teaches a range of subject matters, including business communication, computer information systems, educational technology, and even history of the mafia, which is a very interesting subject. Away from employment settings, he is a dedicated husband and father and a longtime coin collector and there is a formal name for that I'm going to let Jeremy explain that uh, as well and he's also a good friend and a confidant so Jeremy if you will one of the first things I want to ask you is, is tell us just a, briefly about about your coin collecting well and, and the, the scientific term is numismatics which makes me yes, a, a numismatist uh, I suppose, in fairness, since I've never made a, made, uh, made a living uh, at coin collecting, I'm an amateur numismatist, technically. Uh, but it's been a hobby of mine for over 30 years now. And uh, I've, I've mentioned to my wife recently that I do finally have the sort of coin collection that I think I only <laughs> dreamt about as a child. So uh, I have lots to be grateful for, but certainly count, count that on the list. That's wonderful. I, I love that personal touch about you. And, and Jeremy and I have been friends for, for some time now, and, and he's a great asset to the university. So, Jeremy, if you will, tell us how you became part of the CMU community. Certainly. Uh, thank you for the intro, too, Calvin. I, I'm glad to be here. It's, this, this was fun to be invited, and I, I appreciate the opportunity. Yes, I, you know, I, I think, in, in short, I'm kind of a small-town guy. And uh, I, I lived in Bay City uh, just about... 45 miles east of Mount Pleasant, east of Central Michigan University, until I was wrapping up my seventh grade year. And I come from a rather long line of auto workers. My father was a UAW man, as was his father and his grandfather, uh, my great-grandfather. And uh, we followed employment with GM. And so when I was finishing my seventh grade year, my family relocated from Bay City uh, down near Lansing. Uh, growing up in Bay City, I attended private schools. My family, in addition to being auto workers, were staunch Catholics. So I went to <laughs> local Catholic schools. Uh, my folks made a lot of sacrifice to come up with those tuition dollars as I was growing up. Yes, sir. Uh, but those were small schools. And uh, then when we relocated to uh, a village called Ovid, not a lot of people know where Ovid, Michigan is, but uh, it is essentially halfway between Owasso and St. John's and about 30 miles north, due north of Lansing. So that, that puts it, you know, right about here on our Michigan okay. map. But uh, it too was a very small area and I was a graduate eventually of Ovid Elsey High School uh, with a total graduating class of about 150 students. So small schools, small towns, uh, and this, the reason I'm sharing all this is it really does lead into how I chose CMU or how CMU chose me. Okay. Uh, I didn't want to go too far from home. You know, I wanted to be able to possibly get a meal that my mother had cooked every now and then, use her washing machine, that kind of <laughs> stuff. Uh, so I really only considered uh, MSU and CMU and applied to both, was admitted to both, uh, toured both. Went down to East Lansing, toured MSU's campus, and uh, was really quite overwhelmed by it. Uh, the idea that I might have to take a bus to class and then a different bus to a different class, and just, it just felt sprawling to me. Um, and then I visited CMU, and, and one of the things I still recall to this day that was shared on, uh, during my orientation is that 
you know, you, you can walk anywhere on this campus to anywhere else on this campus in about 10 minutes. Um, and even though I was out of shape enough back in those days that it didn't always prove true for me, uh, right out of the gate, CMU had, had the kind of feel that I was used to. Uh, it felt like a community. It felt like the kind of place that was big enough to offer me some real opportunity, uh, but small enough to be filled with people I could meet and become friends with. Uh, gosh, I, I moved to this area more than 20 years ago now. I've, I've lived longer right here uh, at CMU in Mount Pleasant than I've lived anywhere else. I, I think in the list of the right choices I've made in my life, uh, which is probably a shorter list than the list of wrong choices, but nevertheless, choosing CMU is in that right choice column, hands down. Awesome, awesome. That's a fascinating story. And so you've been here, you've built some great relationships, you work for the university, mm -hmm. uh, you're the interim director of e-learning, and you're also taking classes to complete your doctorate in educational technology. So before we go into the key concepts or the, or the key benefits of being at CMU, I want you to identify your favorite professor here, uh, someone you've worked with, and, and why that person is your favorite professor. Sure. I'll, I'll tell you, Calvin, I'm really glad you let me preview this question in advance, <laughs> because being asked it on the spot, I, I don't know if I would have been able to come up with an answer. And I, I want to be clear about why that is. It's a tough question. Um, I, I have had the opportunity, the advantage, truly the honor of uh, studying and working, studying under and working with so many just outstanding professors, faculty. Um, and I enjoyed many of them for very different reasons. But I'm, I'm going to choose for, for my response here a fairly recent example. And I'm, now that I'm on the other side of my coursework, I, I'm, I'm still, I still feel uh, that, that this particular individual is deserving of being identified as my favorite. Uh, and it's Dr. Ming Zhang. He's faculty in teacher ed and professional development and uh, was a professor of mine twice during uh, my doctoral coursework and was a professor of mine at least once, maybe twice during my MA coursework. Okay. So okay. I've gotten to work with, with Dr. Ming, as he's known uh, to many. Uh, quite a bit, and it, it was tough to choose just him, but he, he really is my favorite. This this guy is a model of performance in terms of uh, in terms of some of the mechanical kinds of things, being responsive, uh, getting back to people quickly, being thorough, being organized. That's all great stuff. Um, it isn't really what makes him my favorite. Lots of CMU's faculty are responsive, organized. Uh, He's dedicated, talented. This is a guy who cares. Uh, and, and a lot of the other faculty care too, but, but Ming has a very special way um, of looking out for everybody and, and okay. always making time and always being available. Um, and he helped me do something that, quite honestly, I didn't even know I wanted to do. Wow. Uh, and so specifically, that, that is being published. Right, I think that's a that's a very real part of academic life that many of us are interested in and, and want to pursue. Uh, publishing publishing opportunities really were not at the heart of why I even moved toward earning a doctorate. I was thinking more about career advancement as an administrator and so forth. But uh, after data driven decision making, which is one of the DET courses. Uh, Ming reached out and, and suggested that with a bit more work, uh, my major paper from his course was, was possibly publication worthy. Okay. Uh, and he, he partnered and mentored me through the remainder of that work, uh, was masterful at identifying journals, and, and just really was such an incredible uh, support resource. And the short version is just a few months after our first conversation, we, we got the paper published. Wow. Um, it went live in the October release of, I got to cheat and peek at my notes here, the October <laughs> release of the European Journal of Educational Research. And he and I co-published it. Um, and when he told me that we'd gotten published, that we'd succeeded, we were both attending the same luncheon speaker over in the College of Ed. And I'm, I'm not a big 
most of the time I'm not wearing my emotions on my sleeve, let's say. Um, I jumped up and I hugged him. <laughs> and I didn't know I would be that excited until I got that news. And then I realized, whoa, you know, maybe uh, being published is something I that's appealing to me that I want to do. But but that's that, I think, is maybe the distinguishing factor about Ming. He can see in students things they have not seen in themselves yet. Uh, and that that's very, very special. Uh, since with his inspiration, I've moved on to, to two more publications. I've got one uh, pending that I co-authored with a couple of other faculty here on campus. And I have a paper that uh, the proposal for which was accepted to be added to the 2018 Distance Learning Administration conference proceedings. So that's, that's maybe not quite journal level, but still pretty exciting for a guy who didn't think he was all that into being published anywhere. And, okay. and really the nod, the nod goes to Ming. That's very special. You know, it, it looks like you've, you've developed some good relationships with some great professor, professors. You've also established someone who's helped you go above and beyond what you thought you were capable of doing. And you know, it looks like this program is also challenging you significantly. So if you will, tell us uh, some of the key points of your education at CMU and how they've helped you and how they can possibly help others. Well, and, and this is another excellent question from you, Kelvin, I think, and I, I did give some thought to all this, and I've got some visuals I want to use to kind of okay. understand, I think. You know, by the, by the time uh, an adolescent gets out of high school, right, and I don't know if this was your experience, but it was mine at 18, I thought I knew pretty much everything. You know, I think that's a hallmark of being a teenager. You know that your parents don't know anything at that point. Uh, but but as I've grown and, and gotten older, not to be too cliche, now gradually as I've gone through more education, more experiences, you, know, you realize how little you knew. You continue to realize how little you know, how much you have left to learn. Uh, but fundamentally, all of my educational experiences, including the, the DOC program that, that I'm, I'm nearing the end of, uh, have have added to my understandings considerable skill and knowledge, the ability to do things um, and understand things in ways that I couldn't before. Okay. Um, and so when I say fundamentally, I mean basic things. I'm right. a better writer. I'm a better thinker. Awesome. Uh, uh, more, a more critical reasoner, uh, if reasoner is a word. I engage in more critical reasoning, let's say that. Um, I think that... Mm. Getting more formal education helped me and, and why I chose these particular quotes to better understand even the field I've worked in. So you, you, you're working every day in a particular field, but understanding that even within a context you understand well, there are other lenses that you can look through and other perspectives that, that you can. Okay. And I think that, that's been a huge part of my growth. Uh, as a student is recognizing the existence of other perspectives, placing myself in in those different um, places uh, metaphorically and and seeing different sides to the same issues okay. uh, and and learning to be more creative and so on and so forth has just been uh, hallmark of of all three of my program experiences. Wow, wow, that's good. Anything else in particular that that uh, really impresses you about your education here? I think CMU at large, and, and certainly my own experiences, have been professionally beneficial. Okay. And, and I, I mean this in two ways. So the, the slide, I think, tends to maybe be looking more toward me personally as, as supporting me on my path as a professional and, and giving me a bit more street cred, as it were, as, a, as an instructional technologist, as a designer, as an educator. But I think it's, and CMU makes no apologies for that, right? They are here helping people have productive careers. But I think the, the other piece, which is of equal importance here and equal focus, is that so we can have a bigger impact. You know, so, some of the work that I've done at Central over the last couple of years, okay. uh, was in a modest way. I'm really not trying to toot my own horn too much, but there there were some revolutionary kinds of things that happened here in, in my context that 
I've been able to go out and share at conferences and, and have follow-up conversations with leaders at other institutions and I, I think have a sort of rippling impact on, on their own practices. And, and that's, that's kind of my, the thinking that, that's behind choosing this quote from Congressman Lewis is just this idea that as, as we study and improve ourselves, the goal then is to improve our systems, to improve the experience of others, to improve anything we can with a, with a forward look for, okay. for future generations. Um, and I, I don't have any sort of heroic vision of myself, but I think that's a big part of what this education experience at Central has done for me, is to let me have a little bit more of an impact, a positive impact, uh, on those around me, other schools, other people here, uh, and so forth. But, you know, drilling in, I guess, to the more me, me, me piece, I, I thought about this because your, your prompt ahead of time was that stories are welcome. Yes, so sir. I'm going to tell you one. I'm going to try to keep it brief. Um, but you've probably already been able to put together that I started my undergrad degree, oh, gosh, about 21 years ago. Okay. And I finished it about ten and a half years later uh, after beginning it. That's, so, that's actually encouraging for, for some people to hear. Yeah, well, and I'll tell you, I don't want to see my children do that necessarily, but I don't regret it because I, it let me go at a pace that worked for me. Um, I, I was first-generation college in my family, at least in the sense that wow. when my, my aunts went to high, through higher ed, my, my father and his brothers did not. They were part of a, a family and a generation where the belief was that uh, women needed to go learn to become teachers or nurses, but from an era where the men could just go to work in a GM factory and, and have a, a good life. And uh, quite honestly, my parents gave me a very good life uh, as a child, but I don't think I was super ready for college. And, okay. and uh, that's, that's more feathers in CMU's cap too, in that I stayed the course and CMU was the kind of place that let me do it the way I kind of needed to do it. Awesome. Uh, now, I had, I had some family changes. Uh, you know, my father passed away in the spring of 98. I was 19. He was 44. That, that was rough. You know, I had a younger brother at home. My mom suddenly a single parent. So there, there were some big bumps that were beyond my control that slowed my, my progress as an undergrad. And then there were little bumps that were sort of more of my own creation. But the story I want to tell you uh, is related to that undergraduate degree completion. Uh, I was working for CMU from about 99 forward on staff. Okay. Um, and I was promoted to this manager LMS support position about 2008. But the, the vice president at the time, who was supportive of my promotion, uh, and my director, my supervisor at the time, they pulled me aside and they said, look, you know, you're, you, we know that you're able to perform in this, this higher role, uh, but you've kind of been fiddling around with this degree for a while. And uh, you, you, you have one year to wrap it up or we will rescind this promotion. And uh, I, I assumed they were serious, right? They were very candid about on this point. And uh, so short version is I, I wrapped it up because I didn't want to lose that promotion. They lit a fire. I, yeah, and my, and my daughter came along in 2005, and she was starting to get to be an age where I thought, you know, she, she needed more from us. And the thought of explaining to her 19-year-old self why dad never finished his bachelor's degree uh, worried me a little bit. So there, there were a couple factors going on then. But uh, the reason I went after my master's is I really wanted to be able to teach for CMU. Okay. Uh, that was probably the, the core reason. And when I finished it in 2012, this is where I, I um, compensate, right? I, I work on the law of averages here. So undergrad degree, 10 and a half years, uh, master of arts, I believe end to end was 18 months for okay. me, maybe, maybe 24 months. at most. At the end, you know, my wife and I were expecting our third. I was working full time. I did my terminal project out of sequence on top of two courses. Mm. And, and you ready for this, Calvin? I was teaching five classes at the community college at the wow. same time. So wow. it, it was wild, but I wanted to teach for Central. And, and that, that 
grad degree was the barrier. And so as soon as I got it, it wasn't a month later I applied for approval to teach uh, EDU 590. Uh, and the department has graciously allowed me to teach that, I believe, close to 30 times uh, in, in the years since. And I've not been doing it so much lately because of that, uh, those last couple little items on this slide, uh, specifically the DOC, of, you know, working through the DOC program, uh, but also accepting this, this interim promotion that you mentioned earlier as, as director of e-learning. Those two things have, have kind of taken a lot of the time that I might have normally invested in teaching. Uh, and I, so I alluded to this last point a moment ago, but I, if you want to interject, I don't want to. Okay. So I'll, I'll let you make that last point because I yeah. think it's a solid point. I want to ask you one last question. Sure. We'll, we'll conclude. I think that, you know, this last thing that I want to share, I mentioned my daughter earlier. And uh, I, I rehearsed this a bit. I'm hoping not to get choked up. Hmm. I apologize. I didn't anticipate no, this. No, no, that's fine. Perfectly natural. Understand. I'm hopeful that those little people there. I'm sorry about that, Calvin. I just, <laughs> I just want to be a good example. professionalism that you have, the way you embrace me, and if I can be candid and, and, and share a brief story, sure. uh, just the way that you wrote the letter of uh, recommendation, uh, just a small letter to uh, Dr. Durkin, just to communicate a little bit about your relationship with me as I was pursuing uh, the position there in, in uh, TEPD. It was incredible. So, so this is a testament to the relationships uh, that can be developed, you know, between members of the, the CMU community because you surely did benefit me. And, and I think that your webinar will, will benefit other potential students. And I know that you're benefiting your family by setting an example. And, and this right here doesn't surprise me, and this is why, as, as we conclude. Seeing this picture is a beautiful picture of your family, and it represents your values. But going into your office, which most people can't see, uh, is, is your family on this on this uh, south and and east wall? And I know that family is a value for you and education. So, with that with that being said, as we conclude, uh, Jeremy, th this is this has been good to understand your your career at CMU. What brief um, inspirational uh, message would you have for potential students? in the Masters of Educational Program, Masters of Educational Technology, or Doctorate of Educational Technology. What could you say to a potential student out there who could be considering CMU? Oh, one thing. There, there were many points where I was not sure that this was still fitting into my life because of what I value, because of family, because of my career. Um, there were times where it felt like this was going to get squeezed off off the table. And okay. this, I mean, my coursework, whether it was the MA or the doctorate, it, it's a busy life, man, a, a very busy life. Uh, but the one thing I did each time I felt that way was to reach out to the professor I was working with at the time. And without fail, uh, they had ideas and ways to keep making it work. Uh, I'm thinking of Jennifer Weibel. Um, I'm thinking of... Um, Catherine Durkin, you mentioned Dr. Durkin. I'm thinking of Ming Zhang, Ray Francis, Troy Hicks, Mike DeShriver, Tim Brannon. Um, I had Bruce Umstead way back in the day at the beginning of my MA. Anytime I felt squeezed, if I reached out, they had ideas. They had ways to still make it work. So uh, to anybody who's on the fence, I say jump in. And when you're feeling challenged and you're feeling the struggle, don't choose to feel that alone. Jeremy, thank you so much. I appreciate your time. You, you've been an incredible guest. I love your stories. Love that picture of your family, and, and you're doing a great job here. And I know I appreciate you, Calvin. Thank finished. you very much for having me. Hey, you're welcome. This is Ed Tech Currents, uh, 2018, uh, February. We hope you've enjoyed. Thank you so very much. Have a great day. Bye-bye.